Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode whatever it is. What is it this week, Chad? 110, let's say 110. It's a okay. nice round number. Yeah. We have the lovely ladies of the warning with us here tonight. Oh. <laughs> they will be joining us on Ship Rock 2024. And um, it is so great to have y'all on the program. Thank you again for joining. Uh, I understand that you guys have had a long, um, a long journey where you mentioned to me you are finally back home in Mexico. How, what brought you back home? Where have you been this whole time? Oh wow, God. where okay. have we not been? been? <laughs> yeah, that would be the question. <laughs> no, we just came back from Europe and the U.S. Yes, um, it's our first time like being home for a while, but we're not like home resting. We came yeah. back to record an album. So, but we're home. Yeah, we're, we are home. We're, we're good. Our family, everything's good. Everything's fine. But and yes, it, it's, it's been, been an exciting, an exciting year for us. We did our first ever European tour, where we were also supporting Muse on their European tour uh, this time around. So we we got to visit a lot of new places, a lot of new places. Uh, speak and a lot was, of new languages, which yeah. was cool. So <laughs> yeah. it's just been crazy. Yeah, love it. So what are you what are you going to do now that you're back home? I mean, aside from still think and constantly do music, which is kind of what is in your DNA, what what fun right. stuff do you have? What relaxing things do you have in store for yourselves? Are you going to are you going to treat yourselves in some way, some relaxation and otherwise? Well, um... I mean, I bought myself flowers today. That was like my <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, flowers. Awesome. Flowers. Um but like we're we can't like we just came back but we're working yeah so the relaxation part is just a bit funky but just yeah. being like back home speaking mm-hmm. spanish that that's a big change mm-hmm. and um eating our food like eating mexican food after a long while of not eating that's it all that's, all that's, that's all i need that's all we ask all I, need. Uh, I love it well I, okay then let me let me break the let me break the ice here is there one redeemable thing about Mexican food in America? Where did you, or, or in Europe for that matter? Because speak, that was the that's the freshest place you've been, right? The most recent. Yeah. So, was there anything in your travels? So you got met you 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 are so happy to be home with your food, which I totally get. Was there anywhere in your travels that you found that e- that was even close to the food you had at home in in your travels? Yes. Yes. So in Glasgow, we went to some really good tacos. But it was, it was really like, like no way. We just like go around, and Rudy was like, was closed. the restaurant was closed, and Rudy just like opened the door. Rudy is her manager. Her manager. He just like opened the door, and he was like, "Hey, like, when are you gonna open?" And like, we got <laughs> tacos, just, but it was so good. It was and so in good. Prague, we ate Mexican breakfast. And yeah, it was, chilaquiles. It was so good, but it was like kind of like a happy crying moment because we hadn't had anything close to Mexican food, and like the whole team. Yeah. And we were speaking Spanish in Prague and like everyone was understanding they were, us. Ugh. They were Mexicans in, in Prague, Prague and in Glasgow. So we were just like, whoa. Oh, nice. <laughs> was- I love that. Chad, what were you going to say about Prague? Oh, I was not going to say anything about Prague. I was going to say everything about Glasgow. Glasgow, oh, Glasgow was, yeah. Uh, has like surprisingly spot on like dishes from all over the world. That's the one place that I can, I remember very vividly being like, this place is insane. How do they get? How do? They, how are they way up here, way over here? And there's literally, you know, like n- no sense of that culture here. However, it's it tastes just like it and spot on. So they, they do do their due diligence and their homework. That's for sure. <laughs> did you guys? Uh, you guys are so. When you say you're back home, are you in Monterrey? Right? Is that Mon- right? Right. Monterrey, Mexico. Nice. We're in the house right now, which is so. good. And you just got home, right? You guys are gearing up. And, what do you have? You have, but going back on the road to do some dates with, well, like Guns N' Roses. Yes, right? we leave in in a week. week. Yeah, and um, we're opening for Guns N' Roses in the U.S. That's insane. So it's last insane. year we opened for them here in our hometown, Monterrey, mm-hmm. and uh, it was amazing. But to be invited back and out like, to, to their, their country. country, that's that's insane. We're very excited. Yeah, that's awesome. They were just here. Uh, well, I'm in Nashville, and Chad's in Detroit, and uh, they were just here in Nashville, and that was the that was the uh, the Carrie Underwood's portion of the party, which was super weird and unpredictable. I didn't get to go, but I had some friends that went, and that was super weird and unpredictable. But I love the fact that it's like, okay, it's Carrie Underwood, and then it's like it's going to be the warning. Like, how cool is that? Like, that's super excellent, cool. like awesome, <laughs> like awesome company to be in for sure. 
Uh, where, what, what is there? Was there a handful of those dates with Guns N' Roses? In Mexico? You know, we had we had two that we were gonna do in the United States, uh, but we unfortunately couldn't make one. But we're gonna be in the Florida one. Yeah, we're in Hollywood, Florida. Gotcha. Uh, with Guns N' Roses, yeah. Florida. Gotcha. Hard Rock, the outside, big the big space. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got it. You'll have so much space. I mean, so much fun. It's <laughs> uh, it's an it's an interesting space over there in Hollywood because it's very it's very um. I, not to talk shit about Hollywood, Florida, but the idea is like, wait, what? There's a Hollywood, Florida, and then you get there, and it's literally just like an idea, the idea of a Hollywood island in Florida. It's cool. Like, where that hard rock thing is. Okay. Like, yeah. With that purpose. Okay. Yeah, I got really I surprised. I thought you were pronouncing it incorrectly. I no, was like, I got no. really surprised. Like, what do you mean Hollywood in Florida? But yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Because we have no idea of any geographical thing. Yeah, like, in the know. U.S., we don't know where is what. But yeah. we were like, Florida, but this is something new. And with yeah. Guns N' Roses, like, I mean. It's so good yeah, you, you would fit in just fine with all the rest of us Americans. We don't know where anything is either. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, fine. you were just here in Detroit, though. I, I saw that your dates, uh, your, your headliner run brought you through here. You guys play the shelter, right? I think so. I think I'm so. gonna trust you on that. You know, upstairs okay. or downstairs in that in the venue. Oh, the show! Yeah, no, upstairs, upstairs. I remember you that. I remember that. You got moved up. That's awesome. That's yeah, huge. That's yeah. Oh, I remember. Okay, yes. I got lost in that venue. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's right down the street from me. So I, I saw it hit you guys played there just like recently. I was like, dang, I wish I would have been able to go to the show. It's cool. Yeah, and it was a very like tight tour. We did like eight dates in ten days, so we were just yeah. like, I I mix yeah I, every single venue. I was like, venue, sorry, I was I like where were we? But I remember yeah. that we got. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> One of the interesting, well, the reason why I brought it up in general is an interesting thing that I don't know if you would have, you would even know being uh, from from Mexico, but uh, so Eminem, who's obviously from Detroit, that movie eight mile i don't know if you've ever seen it this this the battle rap scenes those are all shot in that that's that's from that venue that you guys play yeah. Yeah. Oh, the uh, one below yeah. i actually i i didn't know uh but when we got there that. uh charles was telling oh, me okay. that that happened i was just like oh really nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah. it's a little lower i wanted to spread along spread spread around <laughs> how about you al you got any lore uh which which kind of lore folklore yeah, I mean, I, I I did my deep dive on you, on you guys. I've been a fan of listening to the songs you guys always populate. I, the algorithm knows me well because you every time you release something, it always ends up in my release radar every single time. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I work with an act called Zero and Nine Through Six that you guys had done uh, a, that collab track with, and I thought that that was, yeah. that was really cool with with Grandson, right? It was another Ship Rock yes. alum as well. Yeah. yeah. There's so many weird tie-ins with Ship Rock too. Yeah, really. Hail I mean, there's, there's, yeah, there's there's several of those that that came up when I was when I was digging around on y'all too. It's just it's gonna be super cool. I can't we can't wait for you guys to be able to go experience this thing and for sure and really dive in. I think our I think our guests are just gonna are, they're gonna love y'all. So um, oh, we're very excited, excited about it. We're really yeah. looking yes. To yeah. So tell me, um, tell us, tell our tell basically tell me because I don't know if anybody else wants to know, but I want to know, and that's all that matters. Um, what's the songwriting process? There's some stuff that you guys do, um, with your producer. Um, and then, I mean, I've just been so enamored with y'all, you know, you, you go on YouTube and you search the things and it's like, oh my gosh, there's these three tiny little kids. And then you see the next thing is like, oh my gosh, they're growing. They're getting so good. It's like, how did this happen so fast? And I'm kind of going nowhere right now, but, uh, it's just so cool to see real listening music and it's real music. It sounds different than everything out th that's out there. It sounds it sounds broken down and fresh. And it's like, there's a point that's trying to be given. There's a point that's trying to be put across to people. And it's very clear what that is to me. Like, I, I mean, you know, not that I know the point, but it's like, it's very, it's obvious that you're able to express yourself. And I hope that you guys feel good and are proud about the music you're putting out. Cause you should be, but what is, what does the songwriting look like for you guys? Because it sounds, it feels to me like you really kind of work on that really hard. We do. Yes. And, uh, we um, take it very seriously. The reason, like, why we really became a band and we were like, okay, let's continue doing this uh, was because we started writing. So it, it has been, like, it's really fun to see how this process has evolved because we started writing when we were kids. Like, I, was, <laughs> I think I was 12, you were like nine, 
and Danny was 14. So as we've grown up, the process has also changed and like the things that we talk about have changed as well. Um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about the process. It, it, like it varies a lot. It varies song. a lot, but most of the time, Powell really sits in the piano, which is interesting because most of the songs start out as ballads on a piano. Uh, mm -hmm. on a piano and then we just kind of like rockify them together. Uh, the process involves a lot of different opinions as well, because like we each have uh, things that we think should be. I think as sisters, it's the it's the one process where we fight to the most. We do in oh, all yeah. of our like we, like, in every bitter. sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's yeah. Petty sometimes. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like because we are sisters, mm -hmm. we can really communicate properly during the songwriting process, which I feel like it's so important, important. Mm -hmm. and also there's sometimes like it's really hard to communicate what you're like seeing in your head or what you're hearing and because we know each other so well we can kind of like get it and move a song towards that point mm -hmm. but recently like this year we've been writing a lot with other people yes and it's like our first time doing that and it's been like funky not funky like in a bad way but like opening up that process to more people because it's, it's always been very personal for us because mm. it's us sisters our opinions and now strangers who we've never met and we've just known for two hours we don't we're know their now, brains yeah, where they're going we're not just right. 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 Other people, but it's been awesome yeah like, hearing all those new opinions and different points of view over the same thing it's always just like so awesome so now that we're writing new music and we're about to hit the studio and actually record it we're very excited to see how these new processes will translate into the actual album. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. really, yeah, it's so cool. Um, especially having that new dynamic in the room where you're all kind of looking and going, Oh my gosh, this is so unusual. And, but here's, but you know, it's part of it is you have to do that to expand, right? You don't have to do it, but a part of it is it's healthy to get that other opinion. And then the ego check of him. You know, I mean, somebody who's, who could be honest with you. I mean, your sisters can be honest with you in the songwriting process too, where they go, that's stupid that's that's not a good idea <laughs> right but then to have that other person in the room where you want to say to them hey that's not really what we're going for and then figuring out a way to craft it so that you make it go the way that you want to and all those things, and all in a good way nothing nefarious going on but it's it's really fascinating the songwriting process having been here in nashville forever for me just living in the songwriting community is just it's so fascinating especially here where it's like they get in a room and it's like bang, 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 bang. And people and the same thing with LA and in New York, there's it all that it happens there. It happens in a lot of places, obviously, but it's super interesting. Where is the, where, um, what's the big, have you had a big blowout like that? Has somebody left the room and has someone been like super pissed and held a grudge for like three days? Has that happened yet? No, 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 no never. Thankfully. Thankfully. Uh, also, yeah. like this huge, like, I feel like it is the best thing that has ever happened to us in our jobs is that we speak two languages. Yes. So if you don't so know this be... person and you're kind of like still testing the waters on how to communicate your ideas properly, <laughs> you just start saying it like, with a smile and instead it's like, I kind of don't like that. What do we do? <laughs> but it's, it's not in a, like, it's not in a mean and way. And sometimes we just do it so we all know we're on the same, same page. page. And right. we can it's like maybe we're trying to do different things so we just kind of like talk it out quickly and like try and do as best as we can and honestly it is very helpful it's awesome that we, that we yeah speak but sometimes <laughs> where people spanish. who speak spanish so, it's like oh my god hi yeah, yeah. I, yeah. let me let me just tell you though if i was in the room writing with y'all and do you got and i didn't speak spanish you know and y'all were speaking spanish i would know without question the first thing i would say is they're talking <laughs> the chat i would yeah. be like they're totally talking about me oh yeah they, they totally <laughs> hate they well, totally hate this idea <laughs> well, this i love that y'all yeah. do that though you got to take advantage of that stuff it's it's that's yeah. that's, that's so great that's a skit. Not, that's like a that's like a TikTok skit. You guys, it's totally a skit. Yeah, like yeah, line yeah. it, like line it up, make it happen. It's fantastic. It's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if this is a touchy subject or if you don't want to talk about it. So I, I think you should uh, because it's something I literally just found out today. But so Ellen DeGeneres like went hard on like supporting you guys, and then essentially I didn't I knew but I knew about her support, but I didn't know that you. You were followed. You ended up going to college at Berkeley, and then they followed you around filming your lives for her Allen tube. Okay, just out of oh. speaking of social media, uh, in that space, how did that feel? Like, how did going to school, a music school, obviously having 
these cameras following you around shooting things. How did that work with the contingencies of being siblings, uh, you know, working in a creative space and also learning together? Right. I just want to like, first, I want to <laughs> clarify, like, I know that every first I forgot that happened. Yeah, yes. I like, I just it's not present <laughs> yeah. in my memory at all. But <laughs> now that you mention it, people it imagine like a whole film crew following us with cameras. We had a little handy cam that okay. uh, parents that they sent us. Yeah, it was like... our parents recording and interviewing us. Yeah, so it was oh. pretty. Chill. I know, I know. We did. Very have, chill. We did have like there was this Two one days. day, like a couple of days, where this person uh -huh. like, they did bring they the did, whole thing. like follow us around. Yeah, but like we were there for five weeks, and that, that happened was, like two, two days. days. And so you know, it was it was pretty chill. But I feel like it was a nice little like. We intro were into, intro what we were... into what our jobs would turn out to be yeah. yes. in the future years because yeah. social media is a huge part of, of our everything. careers that's how our career started and that's how it kept blossoming mm -hmm. and i feel that like our parents were doing it with us we were very protected it was a yes. good way to start like exploring how to like show our it. personalities and yeah. our work and having mm -hmm. people know you as people but you're also doing this process when you're a teenager and you're just right. like you don't even know who you are but now you have to be somebody so it's it's a weird process but i feel that a big comfort was that the three of us were doing it together yeah so eat like if i was alone that would have been really like yeah, stressful was, isolating yeah. like mm -hmm. oh, no one had but together and still you're totally right like this happened 2015 and that for me feels so far away yeah, i mean yeah. it's, yeah. i don't and it's like it is it was like, it was like, oh. that's insane oh my God, no i don't like that number yeah i don't <laughs> I, I think it's interesting because, you know, going, we were just talking, the reason why I brought it up specifically right now is to thinking about the writing process as Al was um, highlighting there and bringing in people that are not inside of your core. Uh, you, it can be uncomfortable, right? Just like the cameras would be. But as you go into the next record cycle or you go into the next situation where you are being filmed in any way, shape, or form, those are, those are tools in your tool belt mm -hmm. that like most people don't even have the opportunity to flex, you know, uh, at all in their lifetime, let alone utilize for their, uh, you know, for the betterment of what they are doing ultimately with their career. So I think it's cool. And I think at, at the space that you guys are at, and that that's like information that I, you know, I could, I, I could have used back in the yeah. day right uh, for sure yeah like how to deal with situations like that you know having a language that this a different language to speak with my friends would have been so valuable outside of the blowouts that i can remember so mm -hmm. i just wanted to touch on it in that moment oh, oh, i had i i had one yesterday i took my daughter to her guitar lesson and um i overheard one of the students talking to one of the parents and it was really interesting. It kind of rubbed me the wrong way. They said, and this kind of relates to to what Chad's saying here. Is I she said, she said, well, you know, um, the the mom said, yeah, she doesn't really want to play in front of people because she's really self conscious and it's just really it really makes it's really nerve it makes her really nervous. And the teacher said, well, that's okay. She doesn't have to play in front of people. That's just you know that's just not her thing. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. But at the same time, like going out there with nervous hands and sh just scared to death and is like, I would encourage, I would encourage my kids or my students to do it once and at least know where you stand, like as far as how you're going to handle it. And then the thing is you do it three, four times and all of a sudden you get better at it. You get more comfortable, you get more relaxed. I think there's like a real thing. And I experience this because I'm, I'm a half a musician, but I don't play out enough. I don't play out a lot. It's like, I play in, um, and, and like, you don't play as well unless you play multiple gigs in a row. And I want to get into that with y'all. It's like multiple, you know, it, it's like going out and playing a one-off is way harder from a, from a musician standpoint than going out and playing 12 shows over 15 days. Right. It's like you, you're standing up with your instrument. You're not sitting down. Your, you, your muscle memory is all trained. It's like, I feel like that's a super important thing to go out and play and learn. Like Chad said, what's in your toolbox and what you have to offer then you bring those things back into the writing room and you have all these other things. It becomes the roundness of your artistry, right? So how do, do you guys feel like, 
like, okay, we got one gig. Well, that sucks, especially early on, right? Where there was one gig a month, probably or less, or like the one gig you were working for. And now it's like, you just said, well, we had 12 gigs in, or no, you had eight gigs over 11 days. You said, I think something like, something like that, but right. That changes as a musician, right? It's like the comfort level and those muscles get trained properly. How did that, how does that work for y'all? Hey, so it's been a process, yes, but everything definitely. that you said, like Makes definitely sense. hits its mark. Cause I feel we started like properly touring last year and our first tour was a six week tour. We did like 20, 20 something shows, shows in six weeks. And uh, our first proper tour was in the U S it mm -hmm. wasn't even in our home country. So it was definitely very jarring. And it was like, like taking like a deep dive into cold water. It was like, what is going on? And the first time that you do it, it's really tiring. You don't know how to like handle like all the emotional aspects. You're really tired, but you don't have time to be tired. You don't have personal space. Like all of that also really translates into, into how you on play. Stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, like getting used to being that tired and giving your best performance, like it really helps you grow as a musician. It's like, like getting like, how do you say it? Like steroids, like you mm -hmm. just grow so much by having those experiences. And also like playing to different people every day. It's like having mm -hmm. a, a new opportunity to kind of like prove yourself. Yeah. So it's also yeah. Like really and also that. that's where we're super grateful of every single rehearsal that we've had throughout our whole lives. Yeah. Cause you're that tired that the freaking automatic switch turns on, yeah. you know? And, and you're like, just like, live shows, how do I even know how to do become, this? Become like rehearsals. Cause it's so weird. It doesn't matter how much you practice. You cannot replicate what like the live show to practicing. So like one live show equals like 20, 20 rehearsals. 20 rehearsals. Yeah. Like yeah. it's weird. Like it's just, you need it's to just practice so like different. the adrenaline. Like and that's everything. something you cannot like, you can't just do. Just do. do yeah. so, and also like communicating on stage is something that you can only wrong. develop mm -hmm. while you're on stage. And it's a really important part about being a band and Definitely. it's gonna sound really stupid, but learning how to have fun every yeah. day on yeah. stage when you're that tired when like sometimes well we're all human we all have bad days and just like like centering yourself and grounding yourself mm -hmm. in your job and just like learning how to appreciate even though like you're not in the best spot but i feel like we're a totally different band yes. than we were no, definitely. last year yeah. and we grew so touching on a tiny little uh part of what you said about the student in our case, I am so, so glad because as a very shy person myself, when we all started, I'm shy. so happy that we got to do this together. You know, it was like, I'm going to step on stage completely by myself yeah, and do this. <laughs> like, I feel like if we get to like show people that you're not in it alone. Like there's a lot of people who like music, who can take that step with you. And also to like know that mistakes happen oh, and that yes. is part of the live thing you know everyone will not boo you they would mm -hmm. just be like oh my god like, like this year part of the experience, last year we played know? around 110 shows. 15 shows and this oh. year we played, yeah. i don't know how many but we played a lot of shows this year and even though we're playing like almost every day you still make mistakes and, and it's learning are, like never do you never, you never do you would i would never mess up like that in a in a rehearsal studio like, like yeah. ever it just happens yeah. sometimes. but sometimes you mess up and learning how to like first of all like take those mistakes and kind of like laugh it off be chill and learning how to like pick yourself up after that like um like continuing the song after you mess up like all those things mm -hmm. are things that you just gain with experience and you have to do that by like letting go a little bit of like ego wise like you can't take yourself like too seriously like i need to be perfect all the time because that's when you want to grow that's unrealistic and that's when you mess up so and that's only things yeah. that you learn by doing it and communicating yeah. also if people like if my sisters come to me and say like hey you're playing pretty badly right now you you need to listen to that <laughs> and yeah. it, like you can be pissed off it's okay like I, i'm not like whoa yeah i love it when people tell me i'm making mistakes but <laughs> have to take it and listen to it and try to see how you can like be Compensate, better yeah. and like start figuring things out 
Well, or maybe like right. yeah. finding the root of why yeah, it's exactly. happening. Yeah, and yeah. That's I mean, that's an that's a very <laughs> that's a very mature thing to even think yeah. about. Well, I mean, I'm, I, I never even thought about maybe I should figure out what's going on that made me forget you know forget anything in my whole life. You know, yeah. uh, <laughs> to, 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 to like argue back to what you just said, I think the Rolling Stones said it pretty good with their uh, you know it's only rock and roll, but but I like it and the idea of being having empathy for yourself in the situation and and it's cuz because it is just that it's only rock and roll this is entertainment that's that's what you're doing you know your your job is to have fun so that yeah the folks that have purchased the ticket to come blow off the steam to their favorite band and their favorite music are encouraged to have fun as well i don't know who your yeah. first tour was in the states you said was it was that with hailstorm yeah. Actually, no, was, was our own headlining tour. Yeah, like, we had our oh. first headlining tour. And yeah, and weeks. it was our first ever tour experience. So like, that it was, was so it was just like that... a punch in the face of this is everything. And like things <laughs> that, that you wouldn't think about, like our team, like all the settlements, like handling, like closing every show, the merch, right. everything that you just like, like, we had never thought about. Like we were all we were we had like, to do we it. all grew like as a team we all grew a lot a from lot. that experience because we didn't know like we actually didn't know anything about touring like, and even, talking about the hill no thing even to pack like we didn't yeah. know yeah. like how to pack, yeah. how to pack. yeah you, you will never know how to pack no you'll never know always over there's no way we toured with hailstorm yeah. we were which was our next tour it was our second time. tour ever so we get to that like i'm gonna call it a camp because everything was just like so it was so organized organized insane. and we were so, so green in like touring, in touring in so we were like just like I, I feel like we all learned so, so much. much and they were so welcoming like yeah. they were very willing to like hey you know what this is not how you do things mm -hmm. this is how you do things mm -hmm. and it was just such a comfortable place to, to grow like get used to touring because it was also yeah. a very long tour it was also a six week tour it was a summer yeah. tour and uh they were they're incredible people and yeah. we became really good friends not only with them but like with the Lilith crew Sar and all the crew and it was just a lo lovely touring experience and also we grew so much like logistic wise thanks yeah. to them well yeah and yeah. there's where the the shiprock ties again they were they've been on the cruise twice and we love we're you know we're we're i would consider to be pals with them and it, they're just they're just awesome all the way around everybody in the whole camp so what a great i mean and they're gracious enough to to like hold out a hand and say hey let's help you with this it's so it's it, it's invaluable you know it's like because think of the alternative right it could have been awful you know and, and now yeah. you're like you're going home you're like i don't want to do this if this is what it is i don't i don't want to do this right so it's super fortunate that's so great that that that, that happened for y'all um seriously like you've yeah. had a, you've had a, a string of incredible home runs yeah, all no, the way and, it, and, it, yeah. and, and 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 it's well well deserved because you guys are incredible not only as musicians but humans and just in the short period of time that i've been talking to you i'm like oh yeah 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 this is this is exactly what it needs what you guys need i was like oh, what are those gonna oh. be like you know so kudos whoever your parents are too kudos you guys yeah are, you guys your family oh, unit is awesome love yeah. that <laughs> Um, I want to, uh, if you don't mind, I want to change gears because Chad brought up the Rolling Stones. Ugh, thanks a lot, Chad. <laughs> you made me think about things. That's not why I'm here. Okay. <laughs> I just want to, I just, girls just want to have fun. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm when I listen, when I listen to your recordings, um, it really sounds, it's, it, I think it, the reason it sounds fresh is because it sounds live. It sounds real. Um, is that something that you, cause there's a lot of music these days that's very processed and it all sounds it all, a lot of the modern music especially rock music sounds really great i mean sonically it fills the whole spectrum and it sounds it sounds amazing like you know you can tell that they spent a lot of time on drums these days oh my god uh but when i listen to your music it, it feels it feels more raw and that's not a that's that's an observation not anything other than an observation of what i'm hearing and it sounds like that might be on purpose i mean the vocals sound a lot like they're there's a lot of one takes and you know, there's obviously some comping that happens with vocals because it, there has to be, but it really sounds like there's some elements to it where it sounds to me like it's just you in the studio singing. Like it's, there's like, there's, 
it's really happening and there's a there's a producer there and someone kind of giving you direct i mean that happens but it, there's something about it that just feels really up front in the mix and very uh it's like it's your the vocals right on top of you and there's nothing else kind of in the way everything that's there is just build is just is building the foundation for the vocal that you can hear and the lyric that, that you're trying to convey how much thought how much thought do you guys put into the sonics of this the sonic experience of the warning okay so you, everything you is like really it. so yeah. on point so something it. that we've not only heard throughout our whole lives but we live it and we experience it is that our live shows like the way we play live usually sounds better than what we record so what the like the attitude that we bring to recording is like we want to sound how we sound live yeah. we want to capture that essence that sound that energy and just put it in an album that's usually like the my mindset goal. yes mm -hmm. so that's how we record with that in mind you know we just kind of like rock out uh there and in terms of the vocals yes i really uh focus also on that for it to sound very human like the chorus maybe do it the second time around do it again but with a little bit more intensity as mm -hmm. the song like grows no like just kind of like even though it's the same part um it just we really, really like to focus on that and then mixing wise as well we're very into like okay we're, we're so yeah. nitpicky mm -hmm. <laughs> our mixers are, don't, don't like us always but no. <laughs> but friends that they accept Yay. the process which is good but like it's always like with that in mind like just it's stuff that we're playing that we like stuff that we would play that we are actually playing mm -hmm. and and things that we want to talk about so it, it should feel natural it should mm -hmm. feel like and i feel and, and i feel like that is a very key word we want them to feel the the meaning of the song like mm -hmm. when you get in that chorus i wanted to hit you in the face and just mm -hmm. kind of like poof feel it physically right. so well and i and, and the other observation i have is that it's not again not a slam on anything else but the music that i heard didn't seem like it was overproduced it didn't some, seem like there was a lot of additional bells and whistles and i think that and again that's not a that's just an observation uh, and to me that lends itself really well to the live show right because if someone hears your sees a music video or listens on on stream, streams or music and then they go to see you it's like there's not i mean it's like you just get to do what you do without all the other all the other stuff that was never there to begin with and frankly it's only rock and roll right so it's like how much i mean how much shaker do we need in here like do we need the synth thing do we need the keyboard part like do we really need and that's cool and then for you guys it probably helps out too with like the road and with expenses of people and other musicians or a bunch of more computers and more tracks and i mean everybody's probably got a track or two in their arsenal it's just kind of part of the deal but i mean you know, there's a lot of three piece bands out there that have done really, really well. And and you listen to those bands and there can be a lot going on with three people. I mean, there's there's a lot you can do with three people. Hell, well, there's yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean <laughs> I a know, couple like a couple on the road, things. but those yeah. Yeah, was three. Yeah. 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 yeah and we really do have that mindset. We let the song flow in the direction that it needs. And if we feel like it needs the extra element, we will go that way. But if it doesn't, we're like Let's just leave it to yeah. like what mm -hmm. we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, so taking it back to you, you talked about your, your vocal recording um, process or in your preferred experience, right? When you get to that second chorus and uh, do you, do you have like a song in all of the songs that you've put out so far that you felt was the hardest for you, not to, just to perform when you're, when you're recording it, but to, 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 to say out loud to sing it out loud to put the you know even if there are your family members you know even if you're in the studio or people that you trust it still can be you know sometimes a cathartic experience and sometimes a really rivetingly rip me open experience and i'm just wondering you know do you have any of those uh yes i i did actually uh a fun fact about my recording vocals is that i like to record in the dark i like to move around a lot and just feel like in a cocoon of that I am safe in to like fully let out all the expressions no um and then there's this one song in our latest album called Amour which was 
I have no idea what happened. I just I literally started crying so hard. I was trying to connect really uh, to the song and it's a hard song because it goes in from really soft vocals and a low range in my person to a really high range and a lot of just like letting out stuff. And there's a part in the middle that's in French. So it was such a frustrating <laughs> experience, yeah, experience in remember. general <laughs> that I was just like all this, all the things that the song represents because it's a song about um, I'd rather be in a horrible relationship than to be alone or in a horrible like place situation, situation yeah. than to take away uh, the company of other people and leaving myself healthier but alone. So I just kind of like wanted to feel all that so I could express it and it ended up with a full-on mental I, breakdown. I, I remember David, David Bendith was the producer for that album. Okay. It just like sprinted out of the room <laughs> and he <laughs> went to hug you and it, I like I know that it wasn't like the the cutest moment like to no. be fe feeling all of that but like from when I saw it it was like it was, it looked David cute, Bendith yeah. being like like a grandpa and just yeah. like yeah, yeah, hugging you like, and calming you down. <laughs> It was so was embarrassing because all <laughs> his imagine. shirt was completely like, soaked in, in my tears. tears. <laughs> I'm sorry. I remember that. It sounds to me, I don't know yes, that. No. I, I, I don't know him personally, but it sounds like that's right up his alley though, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's pretty yeah. wild. That's a pretty wild experience. I can imagine that, you know, resetting, you know, in that space. I don't know if you called it a day. I, I, I would assume that maybe yeah. there was a moment really. Let's take a little you bit know? of time. I don't think we called it a day, but uh, the break, the I did took a break, but I went to guitars. Yeah, yeah. we oh, recorded yeah. drums and then bass and vocals and guitars are my my right yeah, up my you were alley. Yeah, recording for so like I, a month straight. That was pretty. Yeah. That was so yeah. I just like, hey, let's go back to recording guitars and continue vocals tomorrow. I about that. that was a horrible. So, so does do, does someone do y'all speak French too? Yeah, I was gonna say. No, no. <laughs> so we learned French like oh, think... our childhood, like our school was trilingual. It was Spanish, English, and French. But we, we, it's like when you, oh, I don't want to be mean, but usually when we ask Americans if they can speak Spanish, they're like, oh, oh we learned it in high school, and they can say like la biblioteca we can't and say stuff that. like that. We, we can't say that. We that's how we know. French. No, I can uh, kind of read it. Okay. Uh, because, can... b because I was, I'm, I'm thinking at that moment, like when she, when you had your breakdown and you went to the guitars right then, your sisters wish they knew a third language so that they could talk about you in that language. <laughs> <laughs> just get out of the room. Yeah. The, the, the two of them just had that conversation, roll their eyes and be like, you know, whatever it is like, oh, here we go. A drama dog or something. Oh, and, and by the way, we've been recording the guitars for a month and a half. Okay. We get it. You're playing the guitar. We get it. Like, <laughs> but only in another language. That would be so amazing. <laughs> and even though we don't know another language though it's impressive still our like telepathic thingy i feel like we can understand v each other very well which like, is kind of like could, oh, we yeah. could each other without yeah without saying, saying saying when we work with people for such a long time they start like understanding contextual spanish mm -hmm. and that's yeah, where it's like for sure it's like, no, 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 and no, no, then no. we need to start talking like really fast and like <laughs> yeah. talking, like not <laughs> yeah. or something. Uh, uh, it's so good so giving but it a be, little pig Latin. Is that, is that what yeah. you're so, living <laughs> But so being bilingual, and Chad, you can probably empathize with this or sympathize with me. Being bilingual, see, for us, when we hear people speak Spanish fluently with one another, it's so fast, like mm -hmm. so fast. Is it the same with English when you hear when well no, but you wouldn't know because you speak English too. But, well, you, but it, it depends on the accent. But no, uh, like when we go to the US. That people speak like really it's not it's not that fast deep south you know, hey, man, you know, like, yeah you go down <laughs> go down south it goes real slow now i yes. will i will say this though being mexican i feel like we are very used to having people speak really loud and move their mouth a lot a lot like over there i feel like it's like you, you don't know. necessarily like you just oh, need this we can't read like, lips sometimes it's and that's like, pretty horrible i feel yeah. like some that's where I don't understand, not because of how fast it goes, but I feel like I'm used to a visual yeah, language oh, as well. Yeah, that's true. But, that, yeah, like, it, it's really trippy. It's like when we went to Europe, 
like in the in like in the UK understanding English over there I, I was like you know what I don't speak English here I I don't I don't understand a single word yeah but we so, feel we feel the same way here in the states I'm like what are we, we, yeah <laughs> <laughs> we feel it we feel the same way it's like I turn on the subtitles on on some TV shows sometimes yeah it's like, like I'm yeah Peaky Blinders Chad exactly like the subtitles are on I look like a doofus but I got the subtitles on yeah. it's supposed to be English <laughs> um so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go random here and and f f change the subject again um one of my favorite bands um is haim and mm -hmm. so certainly there's some certainly there's uh, certainly i don't know what am i talking about yeah um i feel like y'all are like the rock and roll version i mean they have some rock and roll elements to what they do but i feel like y'all are like right there on the cusp of being the rock and roll haim for sure i love that yeah, yeah. 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 Like and great. I mean, and it's an easy, it's, I mean, I'm not breaking any new ground here because it's an easy comparison to make. It's like, there's the three sisters, right? That, uh, okay, right. But, um, but it's super cool. I'm excited. I'm excited for the future, what the future holds for y'all. And um, I think it's just, it's nothing, it's nothing but, uh, it's nothing but positive, positive things coming your way. I, and I think that comes from, I'll soapbox it. I think it just comes from the natural. It's just natural. It just seems natural. It just seems like this is what you would be doing this is what you'd be doing and it's like it started that way and everybody nobody was forced into anything it was just it's like this thing that we do and that's what they have right i think they're they're very musical family and that kind of thing um but i do want to ask what was like because you guys have like a pretty kick-ass you guys have the same rehearsal place is like that's that everybody knows about that everybody's seen on everybody's seen online okay so it's the same the same setup i mean what God, that is that is like being home right like you're home with the food but then you're also like hey this is where we kind of sound our best right here like yeah. everything's dialed in just how you like it right definitely uh our rehearsal, like it's literally right here it's, it's literally, yeah um, <laughs> it has evolved throughout the years like when we moved to our current house like this one we were pretty young i remember mm -hmm. we didn't have this room and i would have to play the drums in the in middle the of the living, living room, room. It terrible. and it was so loud it was terrible <laughs> It, it was just so bad for everybody <laughs> so we this like the the rehearsal room used to be like the playroom like the tv room and it stopped being the tv room and it became the rehearsal, rehearsal room it, it just used to be like the drum set and, and your guitars it. and like a little amp so over mm -hmm. the years it started getting like a bit more serious and it's like oh okay and the rehearsal room is evolving we are We're also too. evolving yeah. and yeah. now we've grown with that room oh, yeah. Yeah. That's so oh, cute. That's, oh I don't want to think about that. It gets David me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he just pops in the screen. Is like it's gonna be fine. Uh, I, <laughs> I gotta, uh, I gotta, say, I gotta ask this question then. So then, as you guys are traversing through your musical journey in this this rehearsal space, who's okay? Let me back 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 pedal here. Whose idea was it to record the first cover of Enter Sandman? You guys did not the most recent oh. version, but the first version. Pro okay, no, not probably my, my dad. dad's. Yeah, okay. okay. So we don't come from a, a musical family. Not my at all. parents don't play any instruments. We don't have a history of any family member being a musician. But our parents love music. They mm -hmm. love it. So we grew up in like a very music loving environment You're like watching so, concerts on tv so when we started playing it was just like everyone doing their own thing individually we never thought about being a band it was just like oh we just I like, like this it. and you like that and that's okay mm -hmm. and when i started playing the bass we started playing together just for like oh we can play together Let's do it. Fun. Mm -hmm. and then we were like oh we should learn the same song because we would do different covers like just to learn By the ourselves. instrument like just to like gain experience Sure. And then we learned Enter Sandman. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> honestly, I don't know the thought process that my dad went through. He was just like, let's record it. Mm -hmm. But the thing here was like, we didn't have experience in recording covers. And it was like, recording well, audio recorded, or like, anything. Tunes. Anything, like, yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. But no. it was, we were really like, my dad was like, okay, but it's ha like, it has to be one take. A one shot thing. Like, because we were not, no we editing. can't like, edit. Like, we don't know so how to do any of that. Yeah. It has to be one shot so what you see in that video like mm -hmm. 
It was. I was like, we take played, 20. <laughs> yeah, we played it so many times. I remember whenever Danny was nearing up that solo, really? Alan and I would just like flinch, like, like, please, please, please right. play. I can't yeah, play this please. again. Yes. If someone messed up, it was like, no. We all get kind of pissed. Yeah. But, <laughs> But I remember like just being so satisfied when we saw it. Like my dad yeah. put it together okay. and then he uploaded it. And we really didn't expect anything out of it. It was just like, put it in the internet. Sure. Yeah. And then our career started. Well, and that's, that's and and that's healthy too, because it's like, hey, we do this. Period. This is what we do. Oh, we recorded it, we video. Yeah, this is what we do. It's not like, okay, let's get out and promote this. And here we go. The game plan is coming together. This is our first step. It's like, it's so organic. And that's the way it should be. It's just like a love of music and people just doing things. Like I, I always say like, even in my, in my life and my career, it's like, I, cause I have some good friends that, that, and people that I love that just don't do anything. Like I like to do stuff. Like I'm a doer, like, let, Hey, let's do this. Like, let's do that. And that's, that's healthy, I think. And that's where you're, it seems like that's where the musical foundation was laid for y'all. It's just like, Hey, we're going to do this. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. We're, now we're doing, you know, and when you do, it leads to other things to do, right. Yeah. Doing nothing leads very much to nothing. So it's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that it, that it started that way. It's so cool. And it fascinates me that you didn't have musical, not, not that they're not musical, but like, parents that played instruments and were like, Hey, I'm going to teach you how to play the dobro or whatever. Right. It's like super, <laughs> it's super weird to me. I didn't know that until you just said that it's, it's really interesting to me because I, it's like, I mean, even, it even makes the case for the, the true organic part of how y'all started even, even, even more uh, pronounced to me. It's like, it's super, it's super cool. Everyone gets really weirded out when we say like, well, no, my mom's a dentist. Like, we don't even <laughs> well, like, you all, you all do have fantastic teeth. <laughs> okay. Problem. I mean, look, if everything, if everything falls apart, you'll always have your teeth, you know, it, it, it reminds me of Billy, the Billie Eilish story, you know, with uh, her covering her brother's song, putting it on SoundCloud. And then, you know, no one knew what that was going to be about either. It's a little bit different because there's a brother situation there and it wasn't, you know, but like I, the fact that it just, it, it just is what it, it just mm -hmm. is what it is. And it ended up being exactly what it needed to be without you know the mat it was the magic of divine intervention or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it it's cool and then look it went on to do uh, you get to you re-recorded it it's now it's in video games and in a netflix series and there's a feature on it and man and now metallica knows who the fuck you are that's pretty that's pretty awesome you're opening up for guns and roses foo fighters all this crazy stuff over the idea of your father s simply just saying all right again Okay, it, we can't, you know, we just have, this is what we have to make it work. And that's the beauty of, I guess, like the art of creating and being creative and, and being in a band with other people, you know, uh, the collaborative spirit in general. And your father was just, you know, just- I am just like, I was gonna cry. Okay, so like, I feel like we get so cut up in like what we're doing right now, what we're doing next year, what, what we're we already do. doing for the mm -hmm. next year. Yeah. And like- like you just said a lot of things that have happened in our careers right. and it's like, like it's like oh my god all of that happened at mm -hmm. one point and it happened because we did this thing before that and that thing before that yeah. seeing like how like amazing our careers have been and these amazing opportunities that we've had and like we've had like the work ethic and the discipline to like take advantage of them sure but like so many things that have just been stars aligning and chances of like yeah eight. and it's so insane just like like the first thing our parents not being musicians and the three of us just liking right these and instruments That's even insane. even right now like me personally i've had such a hectic work day that it feels so nice as well to just kind of like sit down and just enjoy and everything like, okay. that has been you know mm -hmm. cool. and, like, guys thank you so much yes, it's, it's been yeah. 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 that's awesome well i will say we are going yeah. to we are going to put career milestone where we, my job is to make sure you have another career, career milestone. And that would be performing on ship Rocked in front of the most insane music fans you'll ever meet in your life. Seriously. They will, they will follow you to the end, the end of your career. I promise. I promise. And that's a promise <laughs> I can make for sure. And Chad knows this. They will follow, <laughs> they will follow you. Yeah. <laughs> to the end, to the ends, like the, you, every show that you play after Shiprock, I will. I mean, that's a little bit bold, but just about every show you will play, 
after Shiprock, there will be a guest there that will say, I saw you on Shiprock. And they're they gonna probably say, don't even say anything, Al. You'll see them in the crowd. You'll see like, and you'll see them in the crowd. The they'll, yeah, they'll have <laughs> yeah. their shirt. They'll have their shirt. They'll have a banner. They'll meet you in the meet and greet. And they're like, I saw you on Shiprock. And you're going to go, why the hell? Shiprock is everywhere. I thought that was just on a boat in the ocean. But yeah. it's real. It's really it's really super fascinating. I'm so excited to, to plug you all in with with our, our guest community. And they're just a great bunch of people. And they're really high protein. Like like they really love music. They ha- it's it's. Honestly, it's not it's not a cheap vacation, right? It's an expensive yeah. it's a it's an expensive undertaking. You got flights, you got hotels, and it costs a lot for us to to buy a cruise ship for six days, right? So, um, the people that are there are really there for their friends and for the music. And you guys, I can't wait! I can't wait for you guys to experience that. I I have a good feeling it's going to be one of your one of your career highs to to that moment anyway. So, yeah, it's, I'm I'm excited. You know, the thing that you're talking about, like the fans. Um, like I, I, it, it's going to sound like I made it up, but we've had like other shows like we played at festivals that we have meet and greets after. And they're like, I just saw you today, but I'm going to see you in ship rock. I saw that oh, you yeah, were nice. on the head. Okay. Like, on the, yeah. And I wanted to out. And it's like, yeah, it's like, we'll see you there. Like, we've heard like, that so many times. Like, Oh, we'll see you in ship rock. And we're like, like yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess we're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. And, and now the other fun part is, and I can, I can let our guests know now, this will be a little bit of a, uh, of a, of a pre-announcement is that y'all, from what I understand, um, you're going to be good to play in the stowaways as well, right? Yes. Yes, yeah. we are. Okay. Because that's a that's a whole totally other awesome thing that'll happen. Chad, Chad is integrally involved, integrally, inter, that word. Galactic, uh, planetary. Yeah, he's, yeah he, he's intergalactically <laughs> involved with, uh, with putting everything together and the song selection and making sure everything runs smoothly. And he'll come out and sing a couple songs too, I hope. Um, so we'll all be, we'll, we'll all be, we'll all be, uh, battling that battle together. And it's, that'll be, that, that'll be super fun too. The way that yes. that whole thing comes around is, is one of the, one of the things our guests like the most. So have you all in that mix on that, uh, that's a big announcement just now for all of our guests yeah. who are going to be listening, um, the warnings we're so be participating in the stowaways. So, um, Al also will be there along the way, you know, uh, we get to tag team that together and to, to capstone a little bit, maybe of what you just said amongst everything else the com- the camaraderie within that community is also a separate version of the camaraderie that you would see with the fan base so now you're in a room with other musicians peers people you don't know people m- that you might be a little bit like you know shaking knees around and they will pick you up they will show you the, the ways you know that the, the, if there's anything you can model the ship after is your experience in your mind is your experience with, with hailstorm maybe uh just simply because there is, uh, you know, a beacon there, and they're happy to guide you to the, you know, wherever you need to go. So, yeah, hopefully that's, uh, yeah. a very, very long uh, uh, intergalactic cruise we did. of life. We <laughs> did, and we just had a special moment, didn't we, Chad? We I, did. I am nearly weeping. Uh, <laughs> and then so, here comes. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're nearing the end of our hour with us. I could do this for another two. Uh, but we like to do a little thing. It's a little nautical pun we like to have. We like to walk the plank. So this is a little bit of a rapid fire thing. You'll figure it out as we go. But you're going to walk the plank with, with us right now, and you didn't even volunteer for this. But I have a question for each one of you I would like to ask. What was the last thing that made you cry? Oh, um, you got this. You got this. I cried yesterday. Okay, I cried two <laughs> times yesterday. It was a very lovely and I was like I'm back home and I started crying and the second one was that I just saw this series called the midnight gospel mm. I have cried so much in my life like I did with that series it was oh watch it it's good I cried. okay it's it it cool. like I don't I don't remember but like my allergies <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's to cats and we have listen cats. it's just honesty man it's just you could have made something up but you didn't you went you just went with it i love it <laughs> oh and uh the last time i cried oh actually probably on stage uh in the last uh tour i'm gonna be super honest i was feeling super uh low on energy because i got sick um, so my voice wasn't at its best. I had a, a, a tiny fever before going on stage tiny. and I, it was okay. a fever. It was a fever. Yes. But like, I, I got it down before the show a little bit. Uh, and I was crying really hard cause it really frustrates me when I can't give my best. Oh, yeah. And I know that it's horrible. 
Yeah. Um, that's that's like time. that's like bigger than stage fright, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. it's like stage fright's one thing where you're like, I'm going to screw up a song. Well, we've already been over that. You're going to screw up a song. But then having that thing that you're not able to give 100%, God, what a letdown. What a bummer. Yeah. 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 It's a crappy so um, what's the oddest way that you've accidentally hurt yourself? Wait, accidentally? That's my question, by the way. <laughs> oh, wait. All three. Yeah. All three. Who, yeah. Where are we going to start? I was accidentally like, hurt myself. Oh, um, I know this one for me. Uh, sometimes. Okay. Um, when uh, we're doing sound check, and sometimes I have my glasses on, and I don't calculate how low they are on my nose, and I put the glasses against like my face, it hurts pretty bad. That's usually how it goes. <laughs> for me, it's either one getting into my bunk in the bandwagon because it's the high one. It's oh, just no. I have to like freaking climb over like Spider Man into it, or I actually have really uh, flexible limbs. I've been trying to work on that, but I once dislocated my shoulder because I was dancing. I was, was just like, was uh, why? Were you doing oh, like no. the this thing? How to, yeah, and that, and just pop, and you're like, oh. <laughs> oh. Like, oh. like, I'm training a lot to make my muscles uh, stronger for so that. So you can now dance. Now dance I can your yeah. heart out. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Also on stage, I move around a lot and I have very weak knees and sometimes I just take a step and I'm just like oh my knee and I just I have a physical reaction to how my knee hurts and then I'm just like for the rest of the show I'm like oh my knee hurts I always <laughs> or like on something yeah. Do you think that anybody's seen you? Do you it, like move, like be, you know, like you know, in the crowd, somebody's watching you play, and you're just like, ah, do, 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 do you think that? No, it looks like a rock and roll face, though. That's yeah, the good yeah. part about it. Yeah, I feel like people Scan might face. notice because, like, I do sometimes, like, oh my knee, and yeah, maybe we'll have maybe. to ask. We'll have to ask. We'll have to ask. Yes. Okay, so the last uh, we're gonna we'll take a final walk down the plank together. But before I ask, before I ask this last question, um, I do want to point out, Chad, I, I want to answer your question. Uh, I um, I tore my uh, my MCL in my knee uh, singing karaoke. Um, so there's that. <laughs> That's amazing. Just just want to just want to let the people know, you know. Yes. What song? That's important. What's <laughs> oh what song? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is gonna make it. This is what makes it. I was, I had the microphone wrapped around my arm like this, like Phil Ence, like Pantera style like this. And I was singing and I was singing It's Your Love by Faith Hill and Tim McGraw. Oh no. <laughs> oh, did you have a wide stance too? You know, I had the widest. I know. I could see it. I could see the widest. As a, as a matter of fact, the witnesses said uh, I attempted a split. <laughs> no. Well, that explains it. <laughs> so I got, so I got done, and I got, I got done with my amazing performance, of course. And I came yeah. off the stage, and I'm like, you know, here's what I said. I was like, my knee feels kind of squishy. Yeah. And well, yeah, because your ligament snapped inside your knee. But I was yeah. so, I was, I was partying so much that I didn't feel anything. And then four o'clock in the morning, uh, when I, when everything wore off. That's when I enjoyed it. That's when I enjoyed it the most. Was yeah, that feeling right that there? Re the, the the ping of regret was was never pingier. <laughs> I actually had the same thing, not karaoke, but the same exact part of my body. Uh, and it was also the worst accidental, weirdest way I've ever been hurt too. I got literally body slammed while wearing a uh, ice cream uh, costume in a music video that we sh shot by the girl who was playing a vampire in the music video, and she like. She was like a professional stunt person. She's like on TV and one of those like NCIS shows. And she picked me up and flung me. And when I was picked up, not even when I hit the ground, but when she picked me up, for some reason, my foot was planted in a weird way and it turned on the ground and my my knee popped and I wasn't able to walk off, off the, set, the set or anything. The day was done. So. Well, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. I'm wearing an ice cream. It, 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 I'm wow. wearing literally one of those big Halloween ice cream 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 thing what? and holding a plunger. Actually, I was holding a plunger in my hand in the scene in the music video. I still wow. to this day cannot use my my knee in any pivoting situations that are like uh, if somebody's going to scare me and chase me and I have to pivot, you got me. Done. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so we 
We've asked this question. We've actually asked this question before of a guest in the past, but I want to ask it. I wanted to ask it again this week because I, the answer is going to be interesting because it might be the same answer, but with, with three, with, with siblings, it might be the same answer. If you could have a conversation with a deceased relative, who would you choose and why? Ooh. Ay, Jesus. You know, we're very fortunate. Yeah. And like, we don't... like most of the family members that I've ever known in my life are, yeah, still, and like, are still alive. Yeah. Yep. You know what? Mm, okay, maybe my... not fa- Maybe not family member then. Just in like a, somebody that has. I don't know. Someone oh in God. your life that you, that moved you that is no longer there. Oh. Um... God, it's wonderful to be that young and have to think about it, isn't it, Chad? Yeah. Good for you. Congratulations. Yeah. Everybody's alive. Soak it up. <laughs> Sorry, that's <laughs> very, very morose. <laughs> my my great grandma, because I feel like I didn't have, like I didn't get to know her oh, yeah, a lot. Wait, but wait, wait. Yeah. hey, you know yes. my mother's, my mother's, my, mother's my mother's grandma. grandmother. Grandma. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We such beautiful yeah. things about her. Yeah, and we just like never got to meet her. That would be lovely. You're that would be lovely. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. What 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 might have happened was the three of you would have picked the same one. So that's interesting. Yeah. Super nice. cool. Um, well, the night has one, come to the night has come to the end. Go ahead, Chad. One quick thing. So Ooh. we want to ask the next guests that we have a question that you're asking. They won't know who asked it until after they've answered it. So <laughs> if, you, if you got a question, and we'll, you know whoever that is, we'll pose it. We'll propose the question as if it was a guest from last week. We can't tell you who it is. Answer the question, then we'll tell. I know. I know. Okay. Yeah, it has to be. It and I you know. don't even and you don't even know who the next guest is. So yeah, this yeah, is gonna be yeah, good. This exactly. is gonna be good. Exactly. Okay, wait. We'll, review. we'll review in Spanish. What is it? Open Google Translate. Okay, cool. All right. We have no idea who the next is uh next guest is gonna be. But uh, while on tour, what's like the most like gruesome thing that they've had to eat? Cause there's like nothing near anywhere. It's just like, what's that meal? Like, like the what saddest, was- most miserable looking meal that you've, <laughs> you've ever had, had because on tour. There's that makes nothing you feel else. bad, <laughs> okay. but you have Okay, Dude, but now that you, it is amazing, but now that you've <laughs> asked it, we have to do a little extendo version of the podcast and you tell us, and you tell us yours. Cause that's only fair. All right. Um, um, I'm trying to think. Okay. Like we've been in some sad things on tour. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like, okay, okay. This is no, kind of mean, but we were in a festival <laughs> in the Czech Republic. Was yes, it the Czech Republic? It was. And they had some really bad mashed potatoes, but everything else was. It was very good. Like yeah. no, it was things I just wouldn't eat. Yeah. So either. I just ate like a sad little plate of really bad mashed potatoes, <laughs> and that. I play the rice. Well. Mine, rice. mine is also on in Europe. It was a Tesco meal. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so like, not the same. Uh-uh. I love that you asked that question because you remember that and you just hated it. I was just like, <laughs> "What is this, man?" Because <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Gas station dinner, right? And you're you pull up to that being like, oh, this is gonna slap. <laughs> Europe has so such good food, bangers and mash. And you you walk into that thing, you're like, what the fuck is this stuff here? <laughs> well, the other this thing is, is too, like food. like <laughs> mash mashed potatoes as an Irish guy, like how can you screw that up? Honestly, like how oh, do you screw that up? They were really watery. <laughs> okay, so they were they were instant. instant. They weren't even potatoes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I could see it. I could see what the 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 the, the like the <laughs> fucking thing that it's in in the line. You, you're holding your plate and scooping it on there. And you're like, oh no, yeah. <laughs> prison prison food. And throw it away. There's somebody behind me, and they're gonna see me do that. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's it's been awesome getting to know y'all a little bit. Thank you so much for the time. We really appreciate it. Seriously. And um, safe travels and, and good luck and everything moving forward. We're we're definitely going to keep an eye out for you. All of our guests will be will be honed in on you now. So I'm glad we got to, got a chance for them to get to know you a little bit before they before they see you play and uh, meet you in person on the ship. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, we'll see you guys very very. Thank soon. you so much Hopefully. for your time. This was a blast, and we'll see you soon. Oh my God. Yes. Oh yeah, I love it. Um...